beautiful faces. Welcome to those at home where I assume my beautiful faces. It is uh, lovely to have you with us and join us for church this morning. Uh, we're going to start with a little bit of worship. Uh, so for those that are able, if you'd like to stand, please, you are welcome to, uh, to join in the singing. And then that's probably going to help a little bit more. Please take your seats, everybody. I've just discovered this morning, back from holiday, tanned we are. Well, it's either tan or rust. We're not quite sure. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a British holiday, so it goes one way or the other, doesn't it? But uh, here we are, refreshed, ready, and vigoured to go again. Have I said that right? Yeah, I've said that right. <laughs> Good. I've discovered... The platform, it gives you like a, it gives me my own bass. That's good, Although, that's good. We already do have musicians. Yes, true, true. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to stop that before I get myself into trouble and spoil it for everybody. Good. Well, it's great to be back with you this morning. And if you're joining with us online as well, a really big welcome to you. We come to open up our hearts to God, to worship him, to acknowledge his love. 
and goodness in our lives, don't we? And um, here we are traveling through August, so it's a little bit quiet. Although in church nowadays, I don't think we're really going to know how strong the congregation is until we get towards the end of September and uh, people get back into normal routines. But uh, it's great to see everybody with us this morning and great to welcome you online as well. We're going to have a good time together as we worship, as we open up our hearts to God. And we've got John and Pauline with us this morning and John's going to come and open up the scriptures to us a little bit later. But before we do anything else, let's read some scriptures together and I'm going to invite Kaz, she's going to come and read to us from Psalm 46. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So Psalm 46, God is our refuge and our strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, should we, in the room this morning. We're going to pray as you join with us online. We're going to open up our hearts to God. Thinking about the words that have been read to us there. God is our refuge and our strength. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. And thinking about also that other really well-known verse out of that particular psalm. Be still and know that I am God. And as we pray this morning, how can we not help but be moved by the things that we see on our TV screens particularly regarding Afghanistan at the moment. And I want us to take a little bit of time to pause and to pray, I'm going to lead us in some prayers. It's been great to see prayers being put on. Our Facebook page is really active these days, and Kaz is doing a great job of making sure that new information goes on there. She's been posting different prayers this week, and I want to pray into some of those prayers this morning. And then we've got a prayer that's been on the Facebook page as well that we're going to put on the screen that we can all pray together. First of all, a prayer that we posted on our Facebook page this week by Bishop Michael Curry. Eternal God, hear our prayer for the peoples of Afghanistan. There is a profound humanitarian crisis. Countless people, mostly women and children, are now fleeing and vulnerable. The lives of many are now endangered. The hopes of many are forgone. Send your spirit, Lord, to rally the resolve of the nations of the earth, to find pathways to save human lives, protect human rights, and to resolve the hardships of those seeking refuge, asylum, and safety. Hear our prayer for the peoples of Afghanistan. This we pray as followers of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And we take a moment to pause this morning so that we can bring our own prayers. Father, we pray for the people of Afghanistan today. The terrible scenes that we've witnessed through this week. And yet here we are, Lord, we feel helpless to act. But we're not (coughs) helpless through our prayers and we intercede and seek you today, Father for peace in this region of the world, in the name of Jesus Christ. With a prayer here by a lady called Christine Kane, or an acknowledgement at the moment we're praying desperately for friends on the ground in the house church movement in Afghanistan, where the Taliban are coming after all Christians. Their courage is immense, 
most expect to meet Jesus face to face in the next two weeks. It is a powerful reminder right now of what matters and making every opportunity count for eternity. Father, we take those sobering words this morning and we stand with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May they know the courage and the peace of God. Lord, we feel unqualified to pray for them, but we lift them before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, we pray. In Jesus' name. And a prayer that we can all pray together this morning. A prayer that was been provided by Christian Aid. It's going to come onto our screens and uh, we can pray it both in person and at home as well. O oh God of mercy and of peace, we hold before you the peoples of Afghanistan. Be living bread to those who are hungry each day. Be healing and wholeness to those who have no access to health care amidst the ravages of the pandemic. Be a true home to all who have been displaced. Be open arms of loving acceptance to those who fear because of their gender, ethnicity, religious or political views. Be peace to those engaged in armed conflict and those who live within its shadow. Turn our hearts and minds to your ways of just and gentle peace. Open our eyes to see you in all acts of compassionate care. Strengthen our hearts to step out in solidarity with your suffering people and hold us all in your unfailing love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who emptied himself of all but love in order to bring life in all its fullness. Amen. And so, Father, hear our prayers, prayed and offered in various forms and ways, but with sincerity from our hearts this morning as we seek you and as we call upon you. And we invite you to be here with us this morning. Come and lead us by your spirit. Be present in our lives. Teach us the things that we need to know and enable us and empower us to walk in the way of your love. Hear our prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats, everybody. Great. Well, as we've been saying over previous weeks, we're obviously on our journey of moving back to the new normal and whatever that is as we enter into the autumn season. But it's great to be able to come to church and not have to book in. It's great to be able to sit where you'd like to sit, isn't it? It's great to be able to sing properly and fervently to God. And it's great to be able to gather together, isn't it, as God's people. You know, there's something good and vital about that and it's great as well that we can continue to build our online community and so we really welcome you as you join with us again this morning um, on that line that's really great well let's come and give you some pieces of information in terms of just working through what things are going to look like as we get towards September um, firstly just a note on our continued giving so we are back to in-person giving in the room as you know um, so you can bring your gifts to, to the Lord's work in that way or of course we continue to we can continue to give online and that's the link that you need to use to um, facilitate your giving if you want to give online and thank you for everybody's continued giving into the life of the church here also as we get back into September we're looking forward to reopening um, some of our small groups and some of the different midweek activities I just want to take you through some of those briefly and then Andrew's going to come and talk to us about the children and the youth work as well so as we move into September we are going to be recreating um, one or two of our small groups uh, the first one of course is the NYC the new youth club with Andrew and Charlotte at a Hope Centre for ages 14 through 18 that's going to be every Tuesday from 6.30 till 8.30 p.m. and that starts on the 7th of September so that's great to see that back and I know you've had a bit of a pre-service social that went really well Andrew so thank the Lord for that and for the gathering of our young people again eh Ashley 
that's a really good, good thing. Here, uh, an opportunity for us to gather together, have some worship, some inspiration, and also some prayer. So midweek service starts on Wednesday, the 15th of September. The in-person life group um, that's going to be led by Dave and Michelle starts on Wednesday the 8th of September. That will run bi-weekly. That's going to start here at the Hope Center. We'll see how that builds and how that develops, and then we'll make other necessary decisions as we need to as we go along. So in-person life group here starts Wednesday the 8th of September. And then fine, oh no, not finally, uh, the Women of Hope, that's with Annie Bell, that starts bi-weekly Thursday the 9th of September at 10 o'clock. So for all of you ladies who are desperate to get back to the Women of Hope meeting, we were delighted that Carol led it for so many years, but that Annie uh, has chosen to take up the mantle and lead that for us going forward, which is fantastic. So again, it's bi-weekly. And that starts in September. And then for those who don't feel that they'd like to meet in person, but would like the opportunity of gathering together in a small group context, we're going to continue the Zoom Life group for now. That will be 7.30. That will also operate bi-weekly on a Wednesday starting on the 15th of September. So just gives us a little bit of an insight as to how we're starting to reintroduce some of our midweek activities and some of the small group activities as September comes. It feels like a positive step. It feels like we're beginning to move in the right direction. Andrew, you just come and talk to us, please, about the Bubbles group and different youth and kids stuff. Good morning, everyone. So, yeah, we've got exciting things starting up again for children and young people, um, including Bubbles, which is the parent and toddler group that's been run here at um, Hope for a long time. So that is restarting on Friday, the 10th of September, running from 9 in the morning till 11.30. Uh, so do spread the word about that if you know people with um, babies and toddlers who, who would like to... Uh, attend a group like that and also if that's something you would like to give time to helping out with as well and that's engaging with the family serving refreshments that would be a big help to us in facilitating that group so if that's something that interests you uh, come and talk to me about that as well that would be great and then we have our family service coming up on the 5th of September so two weeks from today. Um, this is going to be an all age worship service so uh, children young people will be in in uh, for the full service and we'll be having um, having some more more fun than normal. No, that could that could be offensive. Right? Some yeah, all age appropriate fun as part of this service as well. And then afterwards, uh, you can bring your own picnic. We're going to have some outdoor games, weather permitting, and a chance to enjoy fellowship and fun together after that as well. And that is marking so the children going back to school. And also the start of our, our full children's work program, which I am going to talk about now. So on this slide, is uh, this is what the Youth and Children's Ministry at Hope is going to look like from the 12th of September. So for ages 0 to 2, there'll be an unmanned creche in the upstairs uh, area, which is that room up there. Um, that, is, uh, that is currently running as, as we speak. There's uh, just... At, at, um, toys up there in the play area for young children. Um, parental supervision is required up there for under two, so it's just a space where you can go. The service is on the screen for parents to continue watching that, but um, uh, yeah, it's just a space for your children if they are restless in the service here. For the ages two and up, we'll be running a lead mini session, which uh, there will be allocated leaders for that. So if you have age two to four, they will be able to be left in that upstairs area for a minis session, so you'll be able to drop them off and collect them as well. So uh, naught to four will be in the same area, but there's just that distinction at age two for parental supervision. Um, then from ages four through 14, there will be sessions in the Young Hope room, uh, the room just out there. Uh, there will be some joint activities, such as the game and craft between different key stages, but um, there will also be individual um, discussions uh, taking place around the Bible story that will be more age-appropriate, split between reception key stage one, key stage two, and key stage three, those sessions as well. 
Uh, at um, so age 14, going into year 10, there's no Sunday work for uh, children and young people of that age, but that is the age where they can then participate at the NYC running in the week, so there'll be that input into uh, the 14 to 18 year olds' uh, lives as well as part of what we're doing here at Hope outside of Sundays. Um, so if you have any questions about that, do get in touch with me, come and chat to me. I'm happy to uh, explain more about it, but we're really excited about moving it forward. I've, I've got a really, a really great team who are making this happen and are really going the extra mile for this season. And I can just publicly thank everyone who's getting involved in that and i um, really excited about this season ahead. Back to you, Steve. When you think about a gentleman, what pictures spring to mind? Perhaps a very well-dressed man, with his suit and smart bow tie. But what about a gentle man? What would he be like? It wouldn't matter how he dressed, as gentleness is inside. A gentle man would never go and try to start a fight. He would try and be a friend, helping others feel all right. A gentle man would never be a bully, tough and mean. He would be a kind and caring man, helping those in need. A gentle man would never shout with rude and angry words. He would calmly speak with patience till his voice had been heard. Now let me tell you, one and all, we can be gentle too. Just like the gentle man in all the things we say and do. Jesus is a gentle man and we should be like him. The Holy Spirit helps us when we ask him to come in. So let us live our gentle lives as Jesus taught us to, and as he blesses us, then we will be a blessing too. Good morning church, it's great to be with you again this week and today the fruit of the spirit we are talking about is gentleness. Now we are often told that we should be gentle with things and handle them with care. Maybe it's when you get to hold a baby brother or sister or play with friends or perhaps it's being able to play on a parent's phone or when a friend lets you borrow some of their toys. In all these situations by being respectful and careful these are ways that we can be gentle on the outside. But God also wants us to be gentle on the inside, with a pleasant attitude and love in our hearts. Ephesians 4.2 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. And this means we should be like Jesus with a gentle spirit. Now having a gentle spirit doesn't mean that we are weak, but that we understand the value of love and want to spread it around. This is Jesus' gentle way of loving and it can be our way as well. Matthew 5.5 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now the word meek means kind, considerate, and gentle with others. A meek person may seem weak, but the reality is far from it. The world often tells us that a strong person is someone who is tough and does whatever it takes to get what they want. But this is not God's way. God promises us that when we take on his attitude of gentleness and love, we will inherit the earth. And this means that we become a member of God's kingdom. And by being a part of his kingdom, it also means that we're part of his family. And as a family member of God, we can be an example of his ways. We can show the world that a gentle spirit chooses love. Now to finish today, I've got three questions for you that you can think about and discuss with your family. Who is our greatest example of gentleness? What does it mean 
to be gentle. What are some ways we can have a gentle spirit? Well, it's been really great spending time with you again today, Church. I hope you all have a blessed week. Goodbye.
Father, we thank you that that is who you are, at work in our lives, Lord, bringing about your grace and goodness and truth. And for this, Lord, we worship and thank you. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats, everybody. Let's gather together. John's going to come now as we gather around the Word of God and uh, speak to us this morning. So welcome, John. Welcome, Pauline. It's great to have you with us. Please come and open the scriptures to us today. God bless. Morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Great to be with you. Am I on? I think so long. Power's on. Am I on? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, here we are in these still amazing days. Uh, what's going to come next? I haven't a clue. Have you? Well, if you have, you're probably wrong. <laughs> but um, it, we, on President is days, and, and I guess... Like everybody, we've got our opinions. Uh, it, it, it's, it's one of the things that these last 18 months has brought about has been opinion and statements and, and views expressed and, and all wrapped up in a thousand questions. Uh, I find myself, this is, you know me well enough to know that I constantly yell at the telly, but p particularly at the news... I, I, I'm, I'm screaming at the telly, you're asking the wrong question. And, and, and of course, it's from my perspective and we've got opinions. And, and here we are in church and we've, we've found that there's a grace working from screen to screen. God help us. I've had to learn how to preach in front of a mobile phone. Uh, it, it, desperate stuff, but God has helped us. We've, we've, we've managed to process and, and we greet each other two metres apart, mask to mask. And, and here we are face to face, thanks be to God. And, and for those of you that are feeling a bit more liberated, hug to hug. Uh, and, and getting close to the, the closeness of, of what God wants us to experience with him. And my challenge to us, friends, this morning is that, that though we've had to cope with social distancing for all the right reasons, you're not condemned to have a social distance from God. We, we, can, we can experience it in the deepest and the darkest of times, but, but understand that one of the great challenges of COVID is to maintain our, in, our intimacy... And, and our relationship with God, in fact, very rarely do we speak of what we've gone through over these last 18 months as opportunistic. But the reality is, it's an opportunity to prove how real Jesus is to us. And, and, and this morning, just a few reflections uh, around this, this subject Listening to what we've read in the scriptures there about from Psalm 46 typifies a huge ramp of, of, of the scriptures. The New Testament and the Old Testament have got a, have got a narrative. And, and, and sometimes we need to take a bit of a step back. Have you, have you ever seen those images that are made up of dots? And, 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 and if, you, if you go really close up, all you see is dots and a little bit of white space. You have no idea what it is. But if you take a step back, all of a sudden definition comes. And, and I, I'm all for teaching on text and preaching about this little passage and that passage. But there's times when we need to take a step back and look at the big picture of, of the narrative of the story of the Bible. And, 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 and what Kaz read to us this morning encapsulated the big picture. 
she talked about the nations, and, and it's a context of humanity. It's, it's what we call the world. And, and, and the narrative is, is that within that vast planoply of humankind called the nations, the world, God plans to choose a people. And to show himself to, and, and so we've got God's people and we've got the world. Uh, and they became enemies to one another. And in the middle of this all, we've got God speaking. And, and the story of the Old Testament is no different to the story of the New Testament. God has still got a people. There is still a world out there uh, that, that we call the nations. Uh, there is an enmity that is spiritual that goes on between the two. And in the middle of it all, as we said and we said, even then we don't see it. God is still working. There is a God who is actively watching and, and specifically speaking into this situation. And he speaks about the behavior of his own people. He speaks about the freedom that he gives the nations to trouble his own people, to get their attention. He speaks about his anger towards his own people's behavior. He speaks about anger to the nations, how they're afflicting his own people, and he speaks to his people about their hearts. And friends, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. And today, we've got a narrative. Uh, and, and I'm listening to the voice of the nations, and there's, there's a grace within me because they don't understand, because they don't understand. Uh, and, and one's got to be generous that there's well-minded well opinions of every shade of politics, of every shade of ethnicity and, and, and culture. There are good people in every side. We've got to understand that. You may have your view, but there are good people who have alternative views to you in terms of, 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 of a whole raft of things in society. But that is not the point. And we're listening... To, to all kinds of dialogue today, and, and, and Christian leaders in particular, because we love and care for one another. How, how do we repurpose? How do we regather church? How do, how do we speak confidence into those that lack it? How, we do, how do we calm people down who will want to be radical and change the world tomorrow? There's a whole raft of challenges that come to leaders, and my suggestion is, is that we, we ensure that through prayerfulness, we get the right agenda. And, 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 and I, I get very much and, and I'm empathetic to a kind of view that says, this is an opportunity for the church to get more relevant. This is an opportunity for the church to be more contemporary. This is, a, this is an opportunity for the church to serve in a new way that's not distant. And, and all those things I've got, I've got immense respect and regard for. Some of the questions that are being asked by modern day philosophers and Christian theologians are very legitimate questions. We've got to make sure that we come up with the right answers to the questions. Because the real heart, my belief and my conviction, even above relevance, even above engagement, even above contemporary Christianity, is the need for authentic Christianity. We've got to go back to the roots of who we are. We are people that have been saved by Almighty God, been redeemed by the shedding of His blood, have been justified by faith and being filled with the Holy Spirit of God that makes us different. And I'm not meant to be the best of the rest. I'm meant to be uniquely a follower and a carrier of the nature of Jesus Christ. And when we're that, we've got a right to be contemporary. When we're like that, we've got a right to be relevant. But we won't change the world by a new sense of, of, of justice, and I believe in justice, a new sense of charity, and I believe in goodness and charity. All those things are endemic upon every human being. But we don't want to be the best of the rest. We want to be uniquely like Jesus, and the others will follow. That's our agenda. And in the middle of, 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 
of our journey, I find huge parallels in the story of God's people. And I'm, I'm particular, I've enjoyed in this season reading the prophets. Now, I've got to admit that the prophets have never been my favorite bit of the Bible. Mainly because of the way my brain's wired, I like to understand. And, uh, and there's bits of the Bible I don't understand, and they give me enough trouble, the ones I do understand. So, so because it, they, they dem they're demanding. But, but, but the prophets, I've, I've started to do this, take a step back and, and look at the big picture. And, and the big picture is, is that God, uh, and, and the main thrust of the prophetic ministry that God raises up is when he's fed up to the back teeth with his own people. Um, you find in history that you don't hear much from prophets when the kings are good and Israel's following God. The prophets turn up when God's saying, you're a bit out of shape. You need drawing back. And, and, the, pro and the prophetic, they, they give a word of God's, God's frustration, God's love, God's angst, and God's care for his own people, but irritation with them. And of course, that's all 2,500 years ago, and it doesn't happen today, does it? Have you ever asked the question, God, are you irritable with me? Well, you should do. <coughs> because God is passionate about our attitude, about our behavior, about our allegiance, about our trust to him as being Lord and boss. That's the reality. Instead of a complacency that blighted Israel, that can also afflict us. I'm not saying it does to everybody, but it can afflict the church today. Of God, of God saying his care and allowing things to happen through Israel's enemies. And, and, and then him interjecting into the, the, the chaotic state of world affairs that blighted Israel and Jerusalem. And that is blighting our world today not least in where we've been focusing and praying this morning. And, it, and the, the, the cynical, sad truth is that one crisis will trump another. And we'll look at another region of the earth and we, we can despair. And what do we do in all those situations? As a little sideline, I would simply say, that the best way I can serve my Afghan brothers and sisters who are alert to leave, it, leave, leave in this world and laying down their lives is to pray for them and it's to live for Christ with all my heart. They deserve the best from me in my culture as they are giving their best for Jesus. I find that very sobering. It's more than emotional. It's deeply spiritual. I have decided to follow Jesus in Clifton. And I thank God I haven't been called to follow him in Afghanistan. But some have. They deserve our best. And in it all, we have moments when the focus of the prophets is on Israel's behavior. The focus on the prophets is on the nation's surrounding behavior. And then God speaks and Here's, here's, here's a little reference and three simple little headlines that I feel God might be wanting to get our attention to get us to authenticity. Isaiah 52. And uh, they're very rare, these moments, when God actually speaks it like this to his people. But Isaiah 52, and we'll just, just read two verses, the first two verses. And God says this through Isaiah, wake up, wake up, O Zion, clothe yourselves with strength, put on your beautiful garments, O holy city of Jerusalem, for unclean and godless people will no longer enter your gates, rise from the dust, O Jerusalem, remove, remove the slave bands from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. 
there's, there's, there's a bit of a shout going off from God. There's a bit of a yell. Uh, but the tone of it is positive and it's exciting. It's saying change is going to come. And now, now let's go, but let's forget 2,500 years ago and Jews and Babylonians and Assyrians. Let's get to 21st century Clifton and all the mess of our lives and the challenge of society today. And, and whether we're strong in our faith or not, God prophetically speaking to us and says, I want your attention. I want you to get back to some levels of personal authenticity, renewal, capture a fresh excitement about who I am and what I can do for you. I'm challenged by that. As a follower of Jesus for 60 odd years, I'm still challenged by that God wants an authentic with John Pettifer and an authentic relationship with him. Three observations then he makes in these, in these, in these statements here. Number one, he says it's time to wake up. <laughs> wake up! Actually, the prophet here is not alluding to people who are asleep. I found COVID um, do a number of things in my experience. One has been, uh, certainly in the early days of COVID, that I didn't have to get up too early. And, uh, and particularly Sunday mornings, uh, I, I, I enjoyed. Uh, because because um, it, was, it was easy to get, to, to get up. And, and I, I did something, and I've got into the habit of doing something that that in my age I'm allowed to do, but I doze off. <laughs> Anybody else know what I mean by dozing off? Some of you are dozing off now, so you clearly do. Um, dozing off, it, it, it's, it's nice, isn't it? It's, it's nice to have a doze. It's, you're not unconscious, but you're not totally aware. It's, it's a bit self-indulgent and... and, and and it's not unconsciousness, but it's just that you're in your slot, you're in your zone. And, and, and God is saying to, to his people, it's time to get out of doziness. If I, if I wanted to, and, and I'm not making a personal comment about people who are still shielding for legitimate reasons, but, but, but if we're watching online... And we've not yet into the full thing, and I'm going to say more about this. For the wrong reasons, the Lord says the coffee breaks over. It's time to wake up. Now, I've said there's legitimate reasons, for family reasons, for health reasons, why there needs to be degrees of concern. But if we're just doing it because we're a bit dozy, a bit dilatory in our mindset, then God says, the coffee breaks over, it's time to rouse yourself, it's time to stir yourself. Because, because something happens when we doze, and, and this is a trait that COVID has brought upon every one of us, we become self-aware. The first thing, the instinct is self-preservation. What can I do to avoid getting COVID? That's totally understandable. It's fundamentally human. We've got it. But if we then get into a culture that totally focuses upon ourselves, it breeds selfishness. And self-awareness is not the same as selfishness. But it's, it's a fruitfulness from it. And, 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 and when we're dozy, and when we're just indulging our little daydreams, there's a potential for us to get inward thinking, self-obsessed, and we become lazy. Wow. And God says, wake up. Wake up because I don't want you to miss what I'm going to do. It's the parable of the virgins all over again, 2,500 years before it happened. And he says, it's time to wake up. He then says, it's time to get dressed. Literally, he says, he says, put on your beautiful clothes, O holy city of Jerusalem. Now, again, we've got to understand it. They weren't naked. 
It wasn't that they weren't dressed, but he's very specific. He says, put on your beautiful clothes and take off the un uh, 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 Jerusalem. And, and the language that he's, he's wearing, he, he's bringing in, is, is because he's speaking about Zion, Jerusalem. He's got, he's got in his mind here the priestly understanding of God's holy people. And, and basically he's saying this, I want you to put your work clothes back on. Now, COVID has done something else for me. It's given me the joy of living in my glad rags. <laughs> Anybody got glad rags? You know, for me, that sweatshirt that Pauline wanted to put in the bin years ago, but it's worn through at the elbows, it's got a few paint stains, and she washes them regularly, faithfully, but they're still tatty, but they fit like a glove, they're snug. And, 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 and I've got some jogging pants that they say, and, 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 and inactivity means that I put on my glad rags. And, and church, one of the great challenges that we've got is not only to be alert, but it's to reconnect ourselves with service and our work clothes of what God wants us to do. God no, not only wants a gathered people, he wants a serving people. And, and the challenge is, is that we put on our, uh, our, take off spiritual glad rags and put on our working clothes. And you, you know what that is. Stephen is not going to ask some of us seniors to go tromping around the streets. God doesn't want you to do the things that aren't your gifts, but, 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 but he does want your attention. He does want your focus. He does want you to be an encourager when you meet with God's people. He does want you to bash out that odd text and say, I've been praying for you and thinking for you. He does want you to come and, and, and pray for these and, and the leadership here. He wants you to get actively involved in your spirit and actively involved physically wherever you can. It's time to get out of our glad racks. It's time to put on the beautiful clothes of ministry and service. And the challenge not only is of gathering people, but it's reconnecting ourselves with service and ministry. And then he says it's time to rise. He says, he says rise from the dust, O Jerusalem. Remove the slave bands from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. It's time to rise. He's, he's actually saying here, it's time to get in your rightful place. And, and this, is, this is so important, church, what I'm saying here. He's, he's, saying, he's saying, whatever has happened, you've been dozing, you've been in your glad rags, you're not really ministering in the way that you should, and you've been lying down, you can't see things in that prone state as you're meant to see them. He says, rise up. And the rise up is, 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 is to understand that God wants his people to see things as he sees them. It's no good singing a lovely words that God, I believe you're at work, and stay, remain full of unbelief, full of faith, full of fear, of, 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 of faithfulness, and full of fear, and, and be self-indulgent, there comes a point where you take yourself out of your feelings, what he, the word said, what we sang, it's not about my feelings, it's about my faith that God, you are at work, and I'm going to see things as you see them. That's the challenge for me. He says, remove the slave bands, that self-indulgence, that, that, that misery, that apathy, that affects us and actually brings us into captivity. We're trapped in the world's thinking. We get angry with the politicians. We get frustrated at the inability of people to tell the truth. We get all those things that are going, and, and I'm, I'm trapped in it. 
and, and, and as I said, yell at the telly on a daily basis, faithfully yelling at the telly about the hypocrisy, the lies, the distortion. And, and I can get angry and angry, and God needs to slap me on the chops and say, enough of that, sunshine. Come and see things as I see them, and stop lying there, rise up and be a prophet, and see the inspiration that God is at work in the world. And he is building his church. I have. Here's a challenge. If the bit that's preceded hasn't been a challenge. When you come together to pray. The first thing that we do out of love and compassion. Is to pray for others. God forbid we ever stop praying for others. It's the heart of Christ. I want to be, I, I got my message. I want to be gentle. I want to use my strength to serve somebody else. That's gentleness. Uh, and and, and should, we, should, we, should we be a petitioning church? And the answer is, yes, we should. But a petitioning church that is never a prophetic church will never rise up. It will stay in its state of perspective that all it sees is need. And the world is full of need. But Jesus, coming into a world full of need, went up to the mountain and prayed and then he prophesied in action and in word and fulfilled what John the Baptist is saying the change has come the king of a kingdom is with us and he gently brought the power of God into his disciples and into a needy world now I need you to know by temperament, I'm much more comfortable praying for others in their need than I am rising up, being prophetic. Being prophetic is risky. Standing out and praying is risky. You proved it this morning. All of you pray, but none of you pray out loud as frequently as you pray yourself. Why? Because it's risk. I don't want to make a fool of myself. Well, so-and-so prays better than me. And, and that's the comfort ground that we all live in. And those of us that speak a little bit more often, we've had to break that barrier. We're no better than you. We're no superior. We've got no special talents or gifts. It's simply the fact that the Holy Spirit gets to us to the point where we're stirred to actually say, God, I will confess your goodness. I will, in spite of what I see, in spite of my opinions about the government, in spite of my view about the hypocrisy, in spite of this, I will more than curse the darkness. I will speak out the light of the kingdom of God. And I passionately believe, church, and, and I preach this to all the network churches, that we must be a prophetic community. Which, Steve means a prophetic leadership. Joe, it means, it means with all the tenderness and love that we show him, caring for souls, we rise up and speak as God speaks. It's, it's tough. And my prayer is for you too, as I pray for all the other leaders, that we become that prophetic people. So there we are, church. They're the steps to authenticity. It may not impinge upon our social programs, our care packages, our views about theology and ecclesiology. But it's the step that God chose to tell a people to do in preparation for a restoration that was coming. And they did. They went into 70 years of exile. They were plundered. But those who believed returned and God's power came again to Israel. And what happened then is going to happen again. The world is in chaos, but Jesus has come. He's got a people that he calls to be authentic, to look up for our redemption draweth nigh, 
and he is coming again and he is going to establish a kingdom that won't last for a thousand years but will last forever let's be true pilgrims and wake up get dressed and rise up in Jesus name Amen, Amen.
Let's close our eyes this morning, should we? Either in the room or online, we just take a moment to pause and to pray, to commit ourselves to God. And also to think in terms of what John has been encouraging and inspiring us about this morning. In what way is it that God is speaking to you to awake? And to clothe yourself with strength. Where is your next step of courage that you need to take in response to that, that I need to take? Father, we thank you that we've been able to gather together this morning. Thank you that your presence has been with us, that your spirit is actively engaging in our lives. Thank you, Father, that you come and speak into us, Lord, the bread of life to sustain and challenge our holders. And this morning, Father, I pray that each of us as individuals and we as a church would respond to you and to the challenge that you bring. And throughout this coming week, may you know the blessing of God Almighty. May that blessing from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit strengthen and uphold you. Watch over you and may the Spirit of Christ guide you. We ask these things in his name. Amen. 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 Thanks for being with us, being church this morning. Thanks for joining us as well online. And until we gather together like this, in this way, may grace and peace be with you. Hey everyone, thank you for participating and being church with us today. If you'd like to watch the service back, then you can do so shortly. We'll be posting a link online at our website, hopechurchnottingham.org slash live. And if you've been encouraged by our service today, why not share the link with a friend? And if you've got any questions or comments about our gathering, or if we can pray for you in any way at all, then we'd love to hear from you. Please do get in touch via the email address shown on the screen. For those of us who give financially during the Sunday service, we can now do this online at hopechurchnottingham.org slash giving. We've got loads of stuff going on during the week on our Facebook page, updates and encouragement, so please do like and follow us on there. We'll be live again next week at 11am on both Facebook and YouTube, and we hope to see you there. So I wish you a really, really good week. We continue to hold you in our prayers. May each of you know the goodness, the comfort and the encouragement of Christ as you go about your life this week. So that's it from me and the Hope Church team today. Stay safe and God bless.